want to move on to our next selection. Is that okay? okay. On the Ralph Siegel Hit Parade. Is that yeah, I hope I don't talk too much, but it's a talk show, I guess. No, it's better you talk than I talk. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's. <clears throat> I think it's actually. I, I don't know. It's very easy to do a talk show with someone who has a lot to say. So feel free. <laughs> say what you say. What's on your mind? Number five. Next song is called "Weiße Nacht Jerusalem." <clears throat> this comes from uh, Eurovision 1999, and the group was Surprise. Is that right? Do I say it right? Yeah. Surprise. This song has a special uh, meaning to me. Oh, because that's such a really very not just, not, not just because of the Eurovision, but this is the first year that I watched Eurovision and I actually understood what it was. When I moved to London a few years earlier, I watched Eurovision at a party and I, everyone was bringing food from various countries and cheering and voting, and I, I couldn't understand that. But you know, Americans like me, we don't understand irony and we don't understand like <laughs> passion when it comes to music. We like things very way much we like it. You know? I'm sure you're the only American who understands your vision anyway. Well, <laughs> don't be so sure. Uh, if you hear it. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. but, hey, but no, we're, we're not so rare sorry, anymore. Goes, sorry. But I watched Eurovision that year, and <coughs> there were so many good songs when it was this contest. And this one really stuck out for me, mostly because I watched it, you know, three minutes goes by very fast. I hadn't heard it before. And the fact that it's sung in four languages, is that a first? Was that a first for Eurovision? I think it is. No. No? No, no. You're the expert. Tell me what. The first, I did in three languages at the same time, three different melodies, contrapoint, mm -hmm. three lyrics, yeah. French, English, and German was children in our farm. Yeah. Yeah. And it was number 11 or 12 in, in, in Brussels. It did not function, but, but it was so complicated. It sounds good on the record, by the way. But life, it was a disaster. Okay. There's no good to it. Let's play. So that's, that's hard. Let's play this Some song. Some people know it. Yeah. I wanna, yeah. I wanna, fans I wanna, know it. I want to remind the audience about how good this is. Thank you, know, you. For me, what it means to me. We and I must say, the final thread, life, we did in Hebrew. Yes. Yeah. 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 But, yeah so that makes four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, run, let's run the video.
So yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> that was playing to the local crowd there a little bit, wasn't it? I mean, did, did, what did the Israelis, there was any reaction in Israel? I mean, they said, oh my God, there's fabulous <laughs> paper in the Germans. We got 10 or 12 points, I'm not sure, Marcus knows who I are, I don't, 10 or 12. And I, I remember we practiced so long on that, but the whole, the whole group was fabulous, you know, mm. it was. To must say the truth, I'm very proud of that. Because, because this was really a fusion of Turks living in Germany, I mean, they were Germans like we are, but Turks in their mind and soul. But this is the first time, this is the first time that the Turkish German minority were represented in yes. the German song, wasn't it? And it was a so-called weeks and months of double pass problems, you know, you can have a double pass or not. And, and, and I think it was, I was invited to many, 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 how do you say, conventions and, 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 and how do you say, junctions? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it gave me a lot. I mean, then we did we did an album in Turkish. Then uh, I had, had been produced it. They produced it together with with some like, fabulous producers in Istanbul. But it was hard to sell because uh, in those days, an, an album in Germany sold normally 20, 000, uh, 20, 20 euro, no, yeah. twenty marks. Yeah. Sorry, no. twenty five marks, and they sold the cassettes in the in the Turkish market for five marks. Okay. Yeah. So that was a very tough situation CD, for us. But I remember CD prices were in 1999. Catastrophe, yeah. you know? One fifth so that we couldn't sell any records. And naturally, in the end, this was a very expensive, wonderful adventure. We did a great video. And we had a lot of amor, love, mm -hmm. love between each other, you know? But it was a very expensive adventure, like most of the Eurovision situations are. But, but I still love it, and, and I wish I... It would have been a bigger success than it actually was. Well, this is this leads me to another question, Ralph. We, we only met this week for the first time, uh, but from I know your delegation was in San Marino quite well, and I and I've seen Eurovision, a lot of songs that you've done. You're not just a songwriter. You have a lot to do with the conception of how things are going to look on stage. Am I correct? Yes and no. That means I I I dream. You come up with an idea. It's a nice, you know, you know, know what the song I go to, to bed like. with a song, and I go to bed, please don't understand, misunderstand, with an artist every night and wake up with it. You know? <laughs> Especially, I mean, I do this also with, if I work with a normal, with a normal uh, uh, business without your wish, you know? But then you have, and you, have to have, you have to have a thought, what you have on stage, what will happen, how does it look? And when we started writing Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan in German, uh, naturally I, I suddenly came up with an idea. Hello, we go on stage and we find a dancer and we find, and, and th this is all one part of it. And then, but then you need professionals. Mm. You know, mm. I started doing some little choreographies, but I need a great choreographer. Mm. I may tell him, please, can you tell me this or could you help me this? And I may do a little correction because I don't like it, I don't love it, but I couldn't work without a great choreographer or, or art director, you know, like we have tonight here, Fabrizio uh, Raggi, 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 yeah. 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 together, and I'm so glad that we have him in the boat, you know, because he does such a wonderful job with Valentina, and then we work together, and he, he throws me ideas, and I throw some back, but I could not do without it. But you are much, I, think, I have a feeling you're much more involved than many of the songwriters in this contest. Many of the songwriters kind of float in, see what's going on, and just hang around the music. Am I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was uh, raised in this business. I yeah. did never anything else besides sports. I loved sports, but the rest was, was music. And uh, I, I cr created somehow some, some images, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and this is image also. You see silver, you see this, you see positions who sits with the with the, with the bazooki or not, or yeah. the other guy. And you have an, how do you say, an illusion or imagination. Yeah. You know? I think, I think you And then you have to get the right people to do it. Also with, with, with the dress, dresses, you start, okay, let's do black, let's do silver, let's do silver white, and then you start. 
putting things together and saying, oh, that doesn't fit, oh, let's try an alternative. Mm -hmm. you know? I think Eurovision needs more songwriters like you. I don't know. No, I don't I think, think so. I, think I don't know. <laughs> I think many, many fans don't think, they see the finished product, but what the, the creative process when you work on a production like this but has this to be, someone has to be the leader. I mean, it sounds yeah, like but, you. but you know, this is life. This is when you go to the Louvre and you go pass by a picture, paint it, say, I like it, and you go buy the next one. Yeah, good, nice. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter how long we work. You know, it's three minutes sometimes take a year. Well, you know, sometimes it take a week. Okay. If you have a ballad and somebody says, okay, I have a great piano ballad and start singing it, says, hey, we don't have to do nothing. Stay by yourself, sing, we put some strings, and let's hope that nobody just give a spot and do a great song. Yeah. And then you have things like, like, like they do here today. We, we even have ice skaters for today. Yeah. I mean, they jump up and they dance and they go up and down. And this is one part of it. This is one, but we have show business is television today. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not only a beautiful, nice stage like we have here. We only have a piano, and we have wonderful Valentina here in the choir. We can sing without any stress and without any problem. But but if the song is strong, you don't necessarily have to dress it up so much. It's in the end. It's it's in the end. I believe it's the singer, it's the song, and it's the performance. What comes out in those three minutes? Yeah. And then you all need also luck. You know, I've I've heard. I don't say who. People fainting 10 minutes before they had to go on stage. And we brought it back, and then they sang, and they won. <laughs> 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 and they, it's, they had to hit the lowest It's a lot of pressure for an artist to go out there. <laughs> yeah. you know? It's very hard. I have people saying to me, when is it when I'm my own? I said, you just come off stage. Mm. Uh, really, it's, it's, it's unbelievable the pressure for those artists. You know? So sometimes it's easier to be in the background. And as I said, I was. Uh, a few times on the piano uh, with theater, I was in the, on the piano uh, with, with a little piece and I, I do one more time.